Welcome to Electron Line, and in this video we're going to show you how to derive Poisson's law which is the law that defines the, the velocity of a fluid through a pipe as a function of the radius. Notice that towards the edges the velocity will be near zero and towards the center the velocity will be a maximum. And we're trying to find the function that describes the velocity and the function will depend upon the radius, the distance from the center to the edge. All right. How do we do that? Well, first of all, so there's some force that drives the fluid through the pipe. And what is that force? It would be the difference in the pressure from one point in the pipe to the other point in the pipe. And notice we take a segment of pipe length L, so the pressure here would be pressure 1, the pressure there would be pressure 2. So since we know that the force, uh, or better yet, let me start with this, the definition of pressure is equal to the force divided by the area, which means that the force equals the pressure times the area. So if we take a portion of the fluid, let's say a portion from the center to the, to the radius small r, so that portion of the, of the fluid, and so what is the force driving that portion of the fluid through the pipe? Well, we can say that the force is therefore equal to the difference in the pressures, which would be P1, minus P2, because we assume that P1 would have a higher pressure, P2 would have lower pressure with the flow flowing in this direction, times the area, the cross-sectional area of that portion of the fluid, which would be pi times R squared. So that's the force driving the, uh, the fluid through the pipe, and let's call that F sub D. So now we also need to have the force of the retarding force, what's holding the fluid from flowing through the pipe, and of course that would have to do with the viscosity of the fluid and how the size of the, of the uh, portion of the fluid that comes through is being retarded by the uh, friction, basically the friction force, the viscosity of the fluid. So the retarding force, retarding force is equal to minus, and you'll see in just a moment why we picked a minus, minus the coefficient of friction. So we go, we use the symbol mu for the coefficient of friction, times the um, area, times the what we call the change in velocity uh, as a function of radius. So that would be the equation of the force that keeps the fluid from flowing through the pipe. All right, now what is the area? Now the area would be equal to the circumference of this times the length of that portion of the fluid. So this would then be equal to minus mu times the area, that would be 2 pi r, that's the circumference, times the length. So that would be the surface area of this portion of the fluid. So if we take this and simply look at the surface area, that would be then be pushing up against the fluid right next to it. So it would be 2 pi r times the length, that would be the total area of contact, times mu times dv over dr. Now, why negative? Because as you go further out, the velocity decreases, so it's a negative change in the velocity as a function of r, and therefore we need to have a negative there to compensate for that dv so that this whole quantity is a positive quantity. All right, so that's why we use the negative. Now, at a steady state situation, the driving force will equal the retarding force. If it doesn't, if the driving force is larger, then the, then the fluid will be accelerating. If the driving force is smaller, then the fluid will be slowing down. So in a steady state situation, the driving force will be equal to the retarding force. So what we can say is that the driving force, F, um, or say retarding force, equals to the driving force. And so we can say that minus mu times 2 pi RL times dV dr is equal to the difference in the pressure, P1 minus P2 times pi times R squared. All right. Eventually, remember, we're trying to find the velocity as a function of R, so somehow we have to solve this equation for velocity. But first, notice we have a pi on this side, we have a pi on that side, we have an R here, and we have an R squared there. And now we can go ahead and isolate the dv dr. So we move everything else over to the other side. We'll keep the negative on this side. And so then moving up over here, we can now say that the minus dv dr is equal to the difference in the pressure, p1 minus p2, times r in the numerator, divided by, in the denominator, we'll get 
let's see, we'll get a 2 mu sub naught L. So that would be, and the minus stays on that side, so it would be 2 mu sub naught times L. And is everything okay here? 2 mu sub naught L? Yep, I got that. So, so far, so good. So now we want to go ahead and integrate that. So we want the dr, the differential dr to the right side of the equation. So we can go ahead and integrate both sides. So I have minus dv is equal to, and this will be constant, p1 minus p2 divided by 2 mu sub naught L times r dr. And so now we can integrate both sides. And when we integrate both sides, we get the following. We get minus v is equal to, this is still a constant, p1 minus p2 divided by 2 mu sub naught L. And this will integrate to r squared over 2 plus a constant of integration. Okay, now the 2 can come over here, make that a 4. We'll do that in just a moment. But now the next thing we we'll want to do is we want to evaluate this c right here. So, when r is equal to big R, ah, when r is equal to the diameter of the pipe, then the velocity will be equal to 0. So, when r equals big R, the result is that v is equal to 0. Okay, let's do that. Let's plug in big R for R, plug in 0 for V, and then we can solve for C. All right, so we have a 0 is equal to P1 minus P2 divided by, that will now become 4 mu sub naught L, and this will be R squared plus C, which means that C is equal to the negative of that, so C is equal to the negative of p1 minus p2 over 4 mu sub mu times l times r squared. Okay, so now we can plug that into our constant right here. So now we can come up here and see what we get. So our equation is still this, but now we have a value for c. And since c is equal to this, let me just write it out. So we have minus v is equal to p1 minus p2 divided by 4 mu times L times R squared minus, because C will be a minus value, minus P1 minus P2 divided by 4 mu L times big R squared. So all I've done was put in the value for C, and now of course we can combine those two and write it like this. So minus V is equal to, and I don't want to put too big a parentheses there, so now we have P1 minus P2 divided by 4 mu L times little r squared minus big R squared. Now we can finally get rid of the negative sign by simply multiplying both sides by negative 1, moving the r's around, and now we can say that V is equal to the quantity P1 minus P2 divided by 4 mu times L times the quantity R squared minus little r squared. And this then becomes the value of V as a function of R. And notice that V is a function of the R squared, which makes it a parabolic equation, which makes this curve look like a parabola. So that's kind of what we suspected, but this shows that V is an inverted parabola. Instead of opening upward, of course, it opens downward. We have a minus R squared, but it does give you that value. So when R equals big R, the velocity goes to zero. When R becomes zero, it will be equal to this quantity right there. And that is the velocity of a fluid in a pipe, depending upon the difference of the pressure, the length of the pipe, the coefficient of viscosity, and then the radius of the pipe. And that's how we derive the, 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 that's how we derive Poisson's law. And there we go. That is it.